You're welcome to a very special episode of Goge Africa. I'm Mecha Isaac Moses. Well, and I am Neka. Today we're showcasing the first of the Twin Town projects. Their similarities and features. Today the spotlight is on the Dagri Kingdom and Bonny Island. Exactly. Goge Africa Nigeria LNG Tourism Training Experiential opened our eyes to the similarities of these towns. Oh yeah. Are there other towns? with similar features and anthropology that you know, mm -hmm. do let us know. And we'll be right on it. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the expose. You'll hardly find Badagri in Lagos State and Boni in River State being mentioned in the same sentence. Neither will you hear both ancient kingdoms being mentioned in the same historical context. However, the fact is that though both towns are separated by more than 500 kilometers, they share historical, cultural, and environmental heritage that's easy to overlook. That's what we intend to show you on this episode of the program. Now you come with us. And talking of obvious similarities, let's begin with these. Both Badagri and Boni are seaside towns founded around the 15th century by migrant tribes. Both kingdoms were at some point the centers of the centuries-long transatlantic slave trade as embarkation points. Both were strategic slavery ports, accounting for a staggering number of Africans shipped across the world. If you come to Badagri for slave history and you didn't come to the Barracoon, you've not, you're not here, you've not been here to learn about the slave history of this town. Because you can't learn the slave history of Badagri without Siriki Williams Abbas. Siriki Abbas or Siriki Abbas. This compound is called the Brazilian Barracoon. Where we have, unfortunately, is the slave barracks. There are 40 rooms in this compound. In each of the rooms, they kept 40 human beings. Minimum of 1,600 human beings were kept here for between a month and three months, depending on when the European slave ship arrives. We are at the traditional headquarters of Boni Kingdom, which is called Okolama. Okolama means land of the curly beds. I will be using the artworks to explain, like I said, a brief history. If we go to this, you will notice people in chains, like the ones and necklocks, masters, like the ones and I got, we saw at uh, Badagri. This simply is trying to show us about, or remind us about, the slave trade era in Boni. Now, one distinct thing about Boni local government, Boni kingdom, and the rest areas that had or participated in the slave trade was in Boni, either by assimilation, by birth, by adoption, once you're Boni, you are not sold in the slave trade. It's being provided by the Arochukus mostly. They we are the ones who mainly provided the slaves for the Boni 
at it. And the bunny, they are like little men. When they take, they, are com they communicate with um, the whites. Now, one of these things happened with the bunny um, terminal or the bunny port for slave trade that made them overtake Calabar and every other um, um, coastal uh, slave port was their trustworthiness. The whites found out that for every other port, they had to engage themselves, always come. But with, with Bonnie, we found out that these um, slave masters were able to trust. So when they are coming, they say, I am sending for Tobin. The person representing Tobin Bonnie has to be bearing Tobin during his um, um, when dealing with the slaves, the same thing with the palm oil because they are trustworthy that they will send their complete um, goods, yeah, and they get the money they needed. Historians say that out of every 10 slaves removed from the West African coast, three passed through Badagri and down south at the Bight of Biafra of which Bonnet was a part. It is on record that approximately 1.5 million slaves were taken away between the 17th and 19th century. Where we have the country was actually where they usually sit down the enslaved people, our ancestors. And they asked them to sit down over there, the overseer will come and fetch water from this well and give them to them. Don't forget, probably some of them have not taken water for days, so they are anxious to drink the water from the well. But as soon as they drink the water, they lose their memory, they become weak. The government called this well slave spirit attenuation well. Because as soon as they drink the water, they lose their memory. Now, people say, how come they drink the water, they lose their memory? Some argue that the water was charmed. Some say no, it was drugged. Either the water was charmed or drugged. The purpose was to make the enslaved people not being able to think straight and to weaken them. In Bonny, there were have three historical wells, mainly that used to be a source of water for the people. But at, at, at some point in time, in the early 19th centuries, there was a lot of atrocity going on, killing, like if um, you can kill, some people kill their brother to, to, to collect the wife, and so a lot of atrocities was going on. So there was this missionary, his name is Ada Peter. Jack May. So he decided that this atrocity has, is too much and that it, it needs to stop. So now there are these three significant ones. This one is the he will do well. He now decided to put a blood oath on this one. That one, the first well by the palace, and the other one by the market road that is called the Bajari. He put those blood oaths there so that if you drink, as, it, as far as it's the only sort of water, as far as you drink from meat, you cannot harm your brother. You cannot harm your brother. If you harm your brother, if you, if you think of harming your brother, you're going to go down for it. Then for women, they are saying, there's if you if you're a woman and you drink this water from from, from this, but if you get pregnant, you cannot do abortion. You have to give birth to, the, to that child in order to to increase the number of children that we have in 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 you know. So this is a, a significant well, and that oath was put in 1940 by Adabda, but we cannot get the exact date that these wells were dug, but it has been a source of water for the community. There's more. Historically, both towns were among the earliest on the West African coast to welcome European travelers and traders, which included the British. Arising from that, both kingdoms embraced Christianity, and to date, landmarks, including vicarages and cathedrals. The finding that momentous era on the continent can be found in both locations. The famous Sarajakarada, this was his throne. This throne was made out of wood from a wrecked slave ship. After the abolition of slavery, the wood was just a sea. The story behind the slave ship, this Chair is that as the church was going through modifications, it improved as a church, eventually. The little children 
wanted to be part of the children from the church school wanted to be part of that process of community giving for the growth of the church. And in that process, he met the architect of the church, Mr. Parker, and told him that they wanted to make a child. He said, okay, if you get some wood and some money for me to get some things that you will use to fine-tune it. This little kids as at 18, 89, donated six pounds. Six pounds with the rate of inflation is worth over a hundred thousand pounds today. But they donated six pounds from their pocket money as kids. And they made this chair. So during the consecration of the church, some of your said, if my chair if a chair was made for me here in the morning, then that should be my cathedral. Because for years he was a bishop without a cathedral. And that is why Sixteenth Cathedral was a church established in 1864, but made the cathedral 1889. <laughs> This house was built in 1845. The construction of this story building started in 1842. I mean, the foundation of this story building was laid in 1842 by Reverend Henry Townsend. Reverend Henry Townsend was the man that laid the foundation of this story building in 1842. When Reverend Henry Townsend laid the foundation, he handed over to handed over to Reverend C. A. Goma, who completed this story building with seven white artisans, seven white artisans, four brick layers, and three commuters work with Reverend C. A. Goma to complete this story building in 1845. It was a guy who fought against the killing of twins over there. Today we are at the first story building here in Badagri that happens to be an Anglican church. And getting to know where I'm from and the link to this place, which is I'm, I'm actually from Boni Island or a kingdom, Boni Kingdom, and getting to know Badagri. It is amazing how they share similar stories. So as regards Christianity, I got to know, I got to understand that Ajayi Krada was here. Ajayi Krada was also in Boni. But when he was in Boni, he was already a bishop. And not just that, this is the first story building here in Badagri. And over there in Boni, we have the first cathedral church in Nigeria. And this, this, this whole thing links with one person, Ajayi Krabi. So I would say, indeed, there is a link between Boni and Badagri, not just in the slave trade business, but also in Christianity. And yes, Ajayi Crowder is that link for us. Badagri has its Asia Tree Monument, where Christianity was first preached in Nigeria, while Bonnie takes pride in the Cathedral of St. Stephen's, the first cathedral in West Africa. And as must be expected, both towns have parcels of land designated as European cemeteries, which pull their share of visitors. Centuries ago, Badagri and Boni were key trading centers, also known to produce salt in commercial quantities. And this is in addition to the fact that they were also renowned for their coconut plantations. And on a refreshing note, both towns are known for their serene sandy beaches. With these tracking parallels, Google Africa is happy and proud to launch the Twin Towns Project. With this initiative, we aim to connect communities across Nigeria and Africa, which have a lot in common, even if separated by man-made borders and distance, as Boni and Badagri are. 
We are more than glad to be the force that's forging long-lasting, mutually beneficial relationships among our various communities. As a cultural exchange initiative, we believe that the Twin Towns project will be richly rewarding in the short, medium and long term. And so, to kick things off, we took youths of Boni Kingdom on a tour of Badagri Kingdom. Badagri welcomed the group with warmth, with song, with dance. It welcomed us with its trademark hospitality, and its royal institutions rolled out the red carpet in our honor. It was a grand reception in every sense of the word. And no sooner had we arrived than the visiting party started to notice even more similarities between their cultures and that of the host community, including drum beats and dance routines. It was such a delight to see both cultures interact quite organically and effortlessly, one might add. We were honored to be received by His Royal Majesty, the Akran of Badagri, Diweno Aholu Menu Tui I, in his palace at the Jegba Quarters. The visitors also had the pleasure of paying homage to High Chiefs Wawu of Badagri and the Mobi of Badagri at their respective palaces. Both are highly regarded white cap chiefs of Lagos State. While visiting the ballet of Topo, we were treated to a surprise showcase of one of Badagri's preeminent cultural identities, the Zangweto Masquerade. No visit to Badagri is complete without some sightseeing. And so, part of the itinerary for the visit included a walking tour of the town, which is world famous for its slave relics, markets, and museums. of Badagri they are welcoming and coming to realize coming to realize that they have similar culture as my place Bonnie Kingdom is something that is fascinating but then what is even interesting about Badagri is how how they are careful with keeping their history and their culture it's wonderful knowing that I could actually see buildings, materials, and even hear of stories, and even see evidence of these stories from as far as back as 150 years ago, it's also. My name is Benjamin Alaputa. I am one of the participants in the Google African Tourism Training. I've been in Badagri for two days now, and I feel like I am at home because we share lots of similarities. Now, I notice that the care and attention they give to strangers is superb. I really enjoyed myself. I noticed their culture, activities looks like ours 
and see. I feel at home because the drum, the sound of their drum, and the way they respect their monarchs all look alike that of my own. And looking around the things I saw in Badagri here, their sculptures, their monuments, their historical backgrounds and history, they look like what I have at home as well. And I feel it is unique. Of which, when I get back home, I would want to revitalize what we have there in Bonnet and make it a tourist center as well. Among other things, the field trip held the participant to see firsthand how the host town has fared with the preservation of its historical and cultural assets and how its twin town, Bonnie, could adapt or adopt some of the lessons learned from these encounters. This was where the British oyster the Union Jack when they first came to Badagri. And the family dug a well on that same spot for them to take cognizance and to always remember the event so that they remember where the, uh, where the flag, the Union Jack, was always said. That's the essence of this well. If you like traveling as much as we do, here are some tips that will help you on that trip. Tips for comfort during air travel. Air travel may be the fastest and most comfortable means of traveling. However, one may face some distresses while on board. Regardless the stress you encounter, here are a few tips for comfort during air travel. Get to the airport early. You can avoid long queues and long standing by getting to the airport early. Last minute rush to make your flight causes stress. Carry only acceptable items. Check in with airport rules to ensure you carry only acceptable items on board. Tap your feet. Some people experience deep vein thrombosis during long period of sitting. Exercises like tapping your feet or standing up to use the restroom provides relief for your legs. Include prescribed medicine in carry-on. Be prepared for any medical emergency by having your prescriptions handy. Inhalers for asthmatic patients, pills by the hour and other forms of prescriptions should be included in carry-on luggage. Until we come your way again, Traveling comfort and born voyage. So did you enjoy going on those experiential training with us? Oh well, and I'm sure you've learned a thing or two about Badagri and Bonny Island. Well, if you know any town, towns that have similarities, just let us know and like I said, we'll be right on it. So until same time when we come your way again, oh, oh, just tell us. Oh, 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 oh,